Hey everybody, um, noticed a mic issue in the last video, I believe I may have fixed it now. Uh, so, with that being said, welcome to uh, to this. Am, am I faking my channel, or am I faking schizophrenia, or all that stuff? Because, to be quite honest, out of the few negative comments that I've gotten, that is by far the most common one. People watch the usually the most popular of the videos in the in the hospital and they look at all the stuff I have in there and they assume that th it can't be a mental ward or they look at me and I don't seem sick enough. <laughs> uh, this is a funny concept in and of itself as well because with mental illness how the fuck can you tell from looking but uh, but I can see where where they're coming from in a way because I do realize that uh, Danish mental health systems function quite differently from especially American ones and most of my viewers are American and uh, I talked about it a bit in, in the interview with uh, nurse nurse Jess my friend but I, I thought I'd address some of it in its own video so that I may link people to it or they if I'm lucky they, they see it by themselves if they start you know, this guy's fake I'm gonna figure out how well this is for you so why was it that I allowed shoelaces, phone, computer, uh, strings in my hoodie, uh, all these things, they, there was glass as well, and all these things that I could have possibly committed suicide with? And the answer to that is that the way they, the, the wards are set up in Denmark is that they have dedicated wards for uh, different things. And the specific ward I was in, was considered a ward with patients who were not a danger to themselves or others. We were allowed to go outside if you wanted to, or actually were encouraged to sometimes get out a bit and maybe go shopping, come back with something, bake a cake. You know, it's just just little uh, occupational therapy things that they were implementing in the treatment there. And obviously uh, they avoided having patients who were a danger to themselves or others in that ward. There are other wards which are referred to as closed wards for patients who are specifically in that way. And on uh, the offhand that we did have someone there who they weren't quite sure about or who was there because the closed ward was overbooked or something, they'd lock the door and have some person with that patient at all times, uh, which happened a few times. I was in there for an entire year. So I guess I got <laughs> got pretty accustomed to the, the the goings and workings and whatnot but that's the reason I was allowed all that stuff it's because well first of all I had been homeless beforehand I didn't really have a place to store it <laughs> well I could have stored it with my family which was what I was doing but at the time I wasn't even willing to uh, go there and pick it up myself like I, I wouldn't set foot there so uh, at either of their places and it was I suppose it was half shame half anger I couldn't really tell but it was very something I didn't want to do um, and other people besides me had had stuff like that as well because well like I said they weren't considered to be dangerous uh, immediately just uh, unable to care for themselves in large part which was me as well like I said, I, I, I'd been homeless beforehand. It, it wasn't like I, I wasn't trying to survive or that I was attacking anyone. It was more that I was avoiding everything and maybe further isolating me <laughs> wouldn't have been ideal in my case. And I happen to agree with that. So um, I feel, I really feel for all those people who uh, post those comments, not being able to believe, <clears throat> being able to believe that it's this is a genuine psych ward that I was in, that I can't be a real patient, um, and I think that has to do with the mental health system, especially in the United States, because that's the one I'm familiar with, but a lot of other places as well. Uh, there is a decided combination of severe lack of resources, uh, lack of effective treatment, and just general, you, you know, uh, there, there's there's been focus on other things in the United States, and uh, mental health hasn't really gotten 
much of a well <laughs> as it turns out the mentally ill aren't very good at speaking their case for the most part uh, so I guess that's probably why mm. but for for what it's worth uh, my story or my diagnosis my schizophrenia and all that that's that's as real as it gets it was put there by a doctor it wasn't my idea uh, and I made those videos for myself so unless I was trying to trick myself into thinking I was admitted in a hospital I don't know really what <laughs> that would all have been about and to be quite honest a lot of them were quite embarrassing and I'm leaving it up there because I suppose it's honest but <laughs> you know I'm probably not doing myself any huge favors besides, well, that's not true because I do really like the responses that I mostly get and I've met some really cool people through this and to be honest, I think it's helped me a lot because well, I guess that's where that bit of self-worth came from, wasn't it? That's, that's quite interesting, isn't it? So people kept telling me that there was something to me, and <laughs> I guess I just trust them on that. <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, and uh, I hope that well, I hope the mental health systems get better in many other countries because it's, it's just so lackluster at the moment, really. It's, I find it quite sad that most, most of them don't seem to be very recovery-oriented. And the one I was in, it was the, the whole me being able to care for myself as much as possible. Um, was emphasized and I'm thankful for that I, hope, I wish I wish more people could have that experience anyway I already said this but have a wonderful day and uh, I'll see you guys around because I keep trying to make videos